King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Good morning, St. Stephen's. I oh, sorry, that shocked a few of you, didn't it? <laughs> I, I always remember there was a nativity service. I think it was uh, one year when Debs and Dangley Wignall were here. And there was the moment where Debs Wignall was the um, angel speaking to Mary. And she, she was over there on the lollipop mic. And she went, do not be afraid. And I'll tell you what, you've never seen so many scared people in the congregation. <laughs> So good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's. And if you're watching online through YouTube, uh, either live or later, welcome. You are really welcome. And if you'd like to find out a little bit more about what's going on at St. Stephen's, please do go on our website to the contact form or speak to our lovely welcomer, Jill, at the back, who will have welcome cards. We never spam you. We just tell you stuff that you're interested in. So I wonder how you've been this week. Um, maybe you've had lots of things to be thankful for. Maybe you've felt those moments of hope when you've looked at your bulbs coming up in the garden. I know I have. And maybe there's been challenges where everything's been a bit, oh, as well. Maybe you're just dying for half term next week and you just want to be able to have a few days rest. Well, wherever you are this morning, you're here. And you're here in God's presence with God's people. So for the next hour or so, try and let go of the things that are not helpful and focus on the things that are. We've got some lovely songs and stories and words that are said, and we have an amazing invitation this morning to come to Jesus' table and partake of bread and wine. And as we do that, we remember that we are tied together as the common body of Christ, and we are literally God's presence to one another when we leave. I have to say, when I was preparing for this service, I looked at the scriptures, and they, it's one of the most hopeful uh, passages we've read as yet in our series on hope. And just a few verses down from where we're going to read today are some other uh, verses that I wanted to read. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. So as we stand together for our first song, let us delight greatly in the Lord and let our souls rejoice in the God that has adorned us with garments of salvation. Please stand. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Oh, mystery, hearts are yearning for you. We love. You 
foot of Calvary, there is redemption for every affliction. If you feel that you need to come to the foot of the cross this morning, if you are broken, if you are hurting, then don't hesitate, just come. healing and restoration.
bought by that precious blood of Jesus Christ. And as we were singing that, I got a really strong sense that some people just need to be reminded of that help that's available. And if you look up behind me, you can see the most beautiful um, uh, screens that Penny has made. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Let's just bow our heads just for a moment and call out the names of those people that need to be reminded of God's ever-present help. And call out aloud any names of people. And if it's you this morning who just needs to be reminded of God's help and know his presence afresh, would you just raise your hand while every eye is closed? Yeah, absolutely. Heavenly Father, we lift up all of these people that we have mentioned by name and every person that has put their hand up here this morning. God, in your mercy, let us come to your altar and find your help once again. May you breathe on every person by your Holy Spirit to bring healing, comfort and hope. And we know, Lord, that you love us. And we love you. Amen. Amen. There will be prayer ministry available during communion if you would like one-to-one prayer. So please, when communion happens, do feel free to go up there. We have uh, Jane coming and reading for us in just a second. But I was just wondering, Justin, sorry to put you on the spot. Not everyone's going to know you. Um, do take your seats. Justin, can I invite you up here for just a second? I call Justin one of our familiar favourites this morning. He often helps us at the nine o'clock um, to take communion, but I know not everyone's going to know you at the 10.45. So Justin, um, who are you and where do you rock up from this morning? <laughs> who am I? <laughs> I'd like to know that myself. Yeah, there you go. Great question. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, I um, am part of St. Bartholomew's and St. Christopher's, so I haven't come very far. Uh, I live at the top of Farnham Lane, and you'll hear more about that a little later. Um, I've been living in Hazelmere for, well, since 96, was ordained in 2019, priested in 2020, and love coming to St. Stephen's to help out. So there we are. Yay, thank you. Well, we are very, very glad to have you, and we look forward to hearing from you in just a second, so thank you very much. Um, Jane, would you like to come and read to us from one of my favourite passages, Isaiah 61? Good morning, everyone. This morning's reading is indeed from Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 6. And I also love this passage um, for two reasons. Firstly, because we don't only hear about hope and God's promise to us, but if we actually go fast forward to the Gospels, you can also see this promise fulfilled in Luke. And I might actually just pause at the point where after Jesus preaches on this passage in the synagogue in Luke, he actually rolls up his scroll and says that this promise today has been fulfilled in your hearing. So we are actually blessed this morning to hear a message of hope, but we also know if we look at Luke that this promise was fulfilled. And the other reason that I love the passage is because this is the passage that we meditated on when we were setting up Crossways Counselling Service 22 years ago. This was our inspiration and our prayer And God's faithfulness has never deserted us. 
So I love it for all those reasons. Now, I've been asked to read this very slowly, um, and I've been asked to encourage you to really listen with all your heart to this passage. And if anything jumps out at you, a word or a phrase, anything kind of shimmers, um, please remember it, because later on in our prayer time, where Jean will lead us, we're going to be encouraged to reflect on the passage again. So really listen carefully. I'll try and read as slowly as I can. Um, I'm not a slow reader, but I'll really try. Um, and anything that jumps out at you, just remember that for prayer time. So this is entitled, The Year of the Lord's Favour. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, and that's where Jesus rolled up his scroll, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Aliens will shepherd your flocks Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards, and you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. The Gospel is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. Jesus teaches and heals. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those that were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for the power came from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be fulfilled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. O Christ. Please do be seated. Well, it's lovely to be back. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, It's always a pleasure, as I said earlier. We hear about the Beatitudes both in Matthew and in Luke. 
and we hear a lot about those who are blessed, the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the peacemakers. But actually it's only in Luke we hear about the other side of the coin. Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. And woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. I have to say I get a little bit nervous when I hear about the woes. (laughs) Because actually when I think about living in leafy Surrey, well actually to many, we are rich. We are full, and particularly say to refugees, we have a lifestyle that they would yearn for. So this series of sermons is about hope, hope for the world around us. I want to tell you a story about hope. It's a true story that was fostered here in Hazelmere. A story that was commemorated with the planting of an oak sapling on St Christopher's Green just over two weeks ago on Holocaust Memorial Day. It is the story of Stokely Ruff School. Stokely Ruff is at the top of Farnham Lane, as I mentioned. A school for Jewish, German and Austrian children that were fleeing Nazi Germany. In 1933, the first Jewish refugees were starting to arrive in Britain, one of whom was a teacher, Dr Hilda Lyon. Through a mixture of determination and luck, she teamed up with a British refugee group led by Quaker Miss Bertha Bracey. This group were particularly concerned with the plight of German Jewish refugee children, and the idea of a school started to take shape. It was through this refugee group that Hilda met Mrs Marjorie Vernon, who had an estate in Hazelmere, among others, called Stokely Ruff, a manor house with outbuildings and land at the very top of Farnham Lane. Marjorie was very impressed with both Hilda and her ideas, and in an extraordinary act of generosity, which I'm not sure we'd see these days, she handed over her whole Hazelmere estate. Stokely Ruff was founded in 1934, and before long, Hilda had been joined by Dr Emmy Wolfe. As the Nazi persecution became worse and worse, more and more German and Austrian Jewish children arrived. These children, usually alone, but sometimes with siblings, had been sent away by their parents for their safety. And very safe they were. Despite struggling against constant money problems, wartime deprivation and an unfamiliar language, the children, for the most part, had a childhood that they looked back on very fondly. Hazelmere was very welcoming to this group of strangers, that spoke and sounded like the enemy they were fighting. It was Hazelmere that gave them their hope. There were, of course, some exceptions. Some things never change. Lucy and I now live in a very small part of that building, and up until a few years ago, we would receive visits from the same children, now in their 70s and 80s, making a pilgrimage back to the school that both saved and gave them their lives. Our house has a balcony, and it was incredibly moving when we were told that it was on the balcony that some of those lucky children would receive letters from home, delivered by the Red Cross. That is, until the letters stopped coming. Doctors Lyon and Wolfe were joined by a music teacher, Mrs Fox, prompting one pupil to write a poem, which started, I went to school in a forest where I was taught 
by a lion, a wolf, and a fox. <laughs> they believed in a communal philosophy where everyone shared work, students and staff alike. By requiring the children to take part in running their own school, Hilda and Emmy gave the displaced children a sense of purpose and hope, hope for the future. All these pilgrims that came back to Stokely Rough had their own stories to tell, but the daily routines, strict boundaries, healthy exercise of the daily run, coupled with kindness and love, gave them the security they so desperately craved. That is not to say there were not emotional breakdowns. Of course, there were many. But within the strictness, there was an underlying compassion that came from two Jewish German ladies that they themselves were refugees. However, these were resilient children and often spoke of fun and mischief and discovering that the opposite sex weren't quite as yucky as they originally thought. There were at least two marriages that came from the school. One moving story was some, a moving story was uh, of Hans, who actually had left the school before the war and was lucky to be reunited with his family in Boston. But he'd already fallen in love with Herta, Hilda's secretary. Six years later, he was part of the US Army, releasing, releasing prisoners from the concentration camps in Auschwitz and Dachau, before coming back to the UK and being reunited with Herta. One can only imagine the emotional turmoil that Hans went through. The children were also given licence to roam with High Ted Common to explore, and the boys particularly loved going to Gibbet Hill and watching the RAF and the Messerschmitts dogfight in the Battle of Britain. But the overriding sense is one of fondness. One gentleman who we knew, Richard, always kept his Hazelmere bank account so that every month he would receive a letter from Hazelmere. Even it was just a bank statement. Barbara Woolofton, an American lady, wrote their stories in this book, Little Holocaust Survivors. She said this, this is a story of an old manor house, sturdy and steadfast symbolic of England itself, which, although under siege, found a way to offer safe haven and so much that cannot be articulated to stranded and desperate children. So as we heard from Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed and bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and to release the prisoners. Hazelmere gave good news to the oppressed, bound up the brokenhearted and proclaimed liberty to the captives. We might live in a leafy suburb, but when needed, Hazelmere stood sturdy and steadfast, and gave hope to a generation. That hope today is symbolised by an oak sapling on St Christopher's Green. We can and do have hope for the world around us, but that oak sapling symbolises a gift of hope that was freely given, and asks the question, what shall we do with its legacy? Amen. Thank you, Justin. I had no idea about that uh, legacy in Hazelmere until this morning. 
But I do know that there are some amazing initiatives all around the area where hope is spread abroad, where light is conquering darkness. And many times they are the humble things that we don't get to hear about. They're not splashed all over the newspapers. And as I look out, I know many of you are involved in those kind of initiatives as well, where you bring hope. And that is absolutely our calling as God's people. We are anointed to preach good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to announce freedom to the captives, and a pardon to all prisoners that are bowed down through life's woes. So, Jean will come and lead us now on this passage. And as, as we go through it, give yourself some time to just think about this passage in a new way and let God speak to you through it. Thank you, Jean. Good morning, everyone. Our creative prayer today will be using Ignatian spirituality to go deeper into our Old Testament reading from Isaiah, which we've just heard. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Ignatian spirituality. It's a way of praying based on the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, who founded the Jesuit order. And he uses it to try and deepen our relationship with God through personal experience. Ignatian prayer uses our imagination and all of our senses to enter into the gospel stories and become participants ourselves to get to know Jesus as a living person. Today, we will be using something called Visio Divina, which sounds very odd, but it combines scripture and art to immerse ourselves in the word and increase our sense of being with Jesus. And if you're watching at home, please do join in. This morning, you will be accompanying Jesus as he goes to the synagogue to preach in his hometown of Nazareth, where he reads some of the words we've just heard from Isaiah on a scroll. It is the opening scene in the ministry of Jesus where he reveals his saving mission to bring hope to the world. So before we begin, let's prepare ourselves for prayer as we open the eyes of our hearts, guided by the Holy Spirit. So if we could have our music, please. Make yourself comfortable in your seat. You may want to close your eyes and take a few deep breaths to still yourself, breathing in God's love for you, breathing out any feelings of stress or anything else that takes you away from him. Notice how you are feeling today, what you are bringing along with you. As you are praying, just acknowledge what's in your mind at the moment and let it go. Be still and know he is God and be aware that you are being held in the loving gaze of Jesus. So continue to close your eyes and in your imagination, let's follow Jesus into the synagogue at Nazareth. 
I'm going to be reading Luke 4, verses 16 through 21. And as I read it, try and imagine you are there. It is dark inside. There are lights flickering. It's quite crowded with priests and people who have come to hear Jesus. And there is the fragrance of incense. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Can I have the image, please? So as you now open your eyes, I invite you to come to this image, which is coming onto our screen. for a time of reflection. So here is our image. Take a few moments in silence to take it all in. Linger over all that you see let your thoughts roam around without analyzing. Look at the colors, the light, the shadow, the different figures, their expressions and clothes. What are the people saying? And where does your gaze naturally rest? Now look at Jesus. What do you notice about him? his expression. What do you see in Jesus' eyes as he looks at you? How does he make you feel? Continuing in silence, try talking to Jesus right now about what you've experienced in this picture and listen as he responds to you.
think about what Jesus has been saying about himself, the promises he makes. He is here to free the prisoners, give sight to the blind, set the oppressed free. Does this mean you? Share your thoughts with Jesus. Jesus proclaims that the Spirit of the Lord is on him, anointed by God. Do you feel the Spirit of the Lord on you too? An anointing. Perhaps there's a word or phrase from our Isaiah reading that you want to take to Jesus. Ask him what it means for you. Is there something he wants you to do for him? Finally, spend a few moments in quiet to review your prayer experience. If any major ideas occurred to you, you might want to jot them down on the paper that's on the table at the back. Or if there's something that feels unfinished in your conversation with Jesus, you may want to return to it again in prayer. Or spend more time with the painting. It's called Jesus in the synagogue at Nazareth by a modern American artist named Greg K. Olson. You can Google his name and find the painting when you're at home. So let's finish in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time with you for setting us free from sin. Help us to be oaks of righteousness, which display your splendor and bring hope to the world. And thank you, Lord, for that precious oak tree on St. Christopher's Green. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jean, for that um, reimagining of Isaiah 61. Would you like to stand as we come to our communion service now? One of the things that we do is declare our common faith, and we're going to sing this in the words of the Creed, which is a familiar song to most of us. But as you sing this, really think about the words, because these words are what unifies us in our common worship. So over to the band, and then Justin will come and lead us in our communion. Judge. 
virgin da defender suffered and crucified forgiveness is in you descended into darkness you rose in glorious light forever seated high I believe in God our Father I believe in Christ the Son I believe in the Holy And I believe in you, and I believe you rose again, and I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's sing it again, I believe. Yes, I believe. In you, I believe you rose again, and I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in God our Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Just our voices now. I believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Thank you, band. Amazing stuff. You said at the beginning you were fabulous. I now believe you. <laughs> when we come to communion, can you please stay where you are and we will come to you? I don't know if you all know to do that, but I just thought I'd mention it anyway. And now we come to the peace. We were given two commandments by Jesus Christ. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And to love your neighbour as yourself. Well, if we believe in the God within, if we love our neighbour, we are fulfilling the first and second commandments together. So let us offer our peace to each other in whichever way you would like to do it, preferably not hugging and kissing, but perhaps with a little wave. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Our Lady Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light, with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. The the Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, this is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup and gave it and said, This is my blood, shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. Send your spirit on us now, that these gifts, by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Please sit. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
the body of Christ.
Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. So we say together, may we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others, and we whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Justin. I don't know about you, but I found that quite an emotional time. It's been quite a while since we've had communion together at the 10.45. What a reminder that we are welcome to God's table and we are the community of Christ in this church. And there is prayer ministry available for anyone who would like it after the service as well as now. So one of the things that we um, always say at St. Stephen's is that church doesn't just stop on a Sunday. What we do during the week is very much part of our church life. And if you are visiting us for the first time, as I said before, please do give us your contact details and we'll let you know what's going on. But uh, we have some fab stuff in the next few weeks. We have men's curry night um, at Gurkha de Bar. Um, did I see Rob? Is Rob here? Yes, he, they're, they're fantastic. Do go and talk to Rob. Get your pennies in with him. Gurkha de Bar is a great um, curry house in um, Grey's Shot. I always get Grey's Shot and Grey's Wood round the wrong way. Um, Women's World Day of Prayer, Friday the 4th. If you don't happen to work, then you could go along to that. It starts at half past 10. Do uh, speak to Maura about that. They're always good events. And we are heading towards the Lent season. I'm not quite sure how we got to Lent so quickly. It feels like it was Christmas last week. I don't know about you. But this year, we are doing um, a Lent course called Take Time Together. And each week on a Thursday evening between 7 and about 7.45, we will be looking at one of the passages from Luke's Gospel and actually using our imagination to really encounter the um, um, Holy Week event in a new and fresh way. It will be a very gentle time of Christian uh, meditation dwelling on Scripture. And we'll just invite you to come. It's a six-weeks course. Uh, you can sign up on Church Chapel or through the office just to give us an idea of numbers. But it's also really good for people who might not call themselves um, Christians or might be a bit jaded with church, but actually want... Somebody said to me this weekend that they would like to do church that's not church. <laughs> which led to a very interesting discussion, I have to say. But this kind of thing is very much uh, thinking about Jesus and what he offered, but in a very creative way. So please do come along to that. And lastly, we have Jonathan Vera coming to Hazelmere Hall, um, which uh, conversation music, and I love this, riotous anecdotes. I'm not sure I should be recommending riotous anecdotes on a Sunday, are you? <laughs> but... Why not, exactly. Um, and the last thing to say is, um, as of, I think, next week, we're going to be having Live Lent booklets available. Um, as a church, we will be following the Church of England um, Lent book, which has been written by our current Archbishop of Canterbury, and it's called Embracing Justice. This is available through your bookshops or online, etc. And each week, we will be looking at a different chapter. So you may want to get hold of it and read it. If not, don't worry. But you will be able to either pick up a booklet or to save the planet and not have so much printing, download it on your phone or your iPad or your laptop. And there is an app that you can have. And uh, there is a, a small reading every day that you can follow. And the good thing is there's, there's children's versions as well, which has got some great cartoons in and things like that. So do um, um, pick one up when they're available from next week, Julie, I think. Yeah, that's great. Um, and I just wanted to uh, say to everybody, thanks so much for everyone who's stepped up to volunteering and, and really being part of the church community at the moment. It's really humbling just to see everybody want to see the, the church thrive and hope be poured abroad. 
And if you are at a stage where you're wondering whether you want to tip your toe in the water, you might want to volunteer for something, but you're not quite sure, do come and talk to myself or Julie or the wardens afterwards, because there's always ways to serve. And you don't have to commit to ever, okay? I'm looking out at Noel, who is still called interim treasurer after, I don't know, nine, ten years. That, that's not the norm, okay? So if you just want to try something for a season, especially around youth and children's work, please do say so. But as we go, um, we are going to sing our final hymn, which is Shout to the Lord. Uh, Justin, would you like to pronounce the blessing for us? Okay, thank you. Great. Please stand. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you with all those whom you love today tomorrow, the rest of this week. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.